This video is all about hair, what it's made of, and I really just find it important because it affects the products you use and how you treat your hair. So what it actually is encompassed in cosmetology is hair, skin, nails, and uh, glands. It's all part of the integumentary system. I do trip up on that word, so don't quote me on how to pronounce that. Integumentary system. And that just protects your body. Um, it protects you from moisture loss. It protects from abrasion. So it's a really important part of the human body. So hair is actually made up of two parts, and that would be the hair root and the hair shaft. The hair root is located uh, um, below the surface of the epidermis, so it's something that you can't see with your eyes. You'd have to slice the skin and look at it um, underneath that. The hair shaft is what you can actually see. That's the portion above the epidermis. Uh, the epidermis is the outer layer of the skin, if you didn't know. So going into the actual structure of hair, the hair bulb is the lowest part of the hair strand. It's thickest, um, it's club shaped, and the hair root, again, is what is below the layer of the epidermis, which is the line I just drew. I label it later. And the hair shaft would be the part that's projecting above the epidermis. What I'm drawing here, I end up labeling it a lot later, is the hair follicle. And that is the like a pocket in the skin, and that's what contains the hair root. Uh, that's all over the body, except for, of course, the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. You don't have hair there. Sometimes even more than one hair can grow out of a hair follicle. Um, fun fact, the uh, stuff I'm drawing right now is the sebaceous gland. And that is an oil gland in the skin, and it's connected to all the hair follicles that you have. And that sebaceous gland secretes like a fatty, oily substance, which is actually called sebum. And it helps to lubricate the skin. So it's actually a really important part of the integumentary system. Next I draw the dermal papilla, but I don't label it till later. The dermal papilla is located at the base of the hair follicle and fits into the bulb. It contains blood and nerve supply that provides nutrients for needed for hair growth. What I draw here is the erectile pili muscle. This is small involuntary muscle and it's located at the base of the hair follicle. When it contracts, it causes the hair to stand straight up, and we also know this as goosebumps. So in cold weather or strong emotions can make it react, contract, and the hair goes straight up. All I'm drawing here are some cells just to complete the picture. And that is the structure of hair. So going into the actual structure of the hair shaft, this is me starting to draw a dissected hair shaft. So what I'm drawing here is the cuticle layer. And that's the outermost layer of the hair. Um, they're often referred to as like shingles on a roof. So they lay over top of one another, one another and it provides a barrier that protects the inner structure of the hair. Um, and it's responsible actually for creating the shine and smooth, silky feeling of uh, healthy hair. So unhealthy hair, usually the cuticle layer is blown open and we often ref try to think of that as like a hurricane ripping through a shingles on a house roof. So the middle pink is the medulla. Not everyone has a medulla layer. A lot of brunettes tend to, but doesn't mean all of them do. 
Uh, it's just an innermost layer, round cells. And then the blue that I circled within is the cortex layer. It's the middle layer. It's fibrous protein, uh, elongated cells. That's where the melanin is contained, and that gives you the pigment and color of hair. You can get into a lot more details of what is in the structure of hair within the cortex. There's a lot going on, but I'm just going to keep it to the basics. So what hair is actually made up of starts with protein, and that originates within the hair follicle, and as start, it's the whole beginning of hair. And as hair follows up into the follicle, it matures through a process called keratinization. And these newly cells, newly formed cells mature and they fill with fibrous protein called keratin. Once they've filled with keratin, the cells move, continue to move upward, they lose their nucleus, and they die. By the time they emerge from the epidermis into the hair shaft, um, they're completely keratinized, they're not living, and emerges as a non-living fiber composed of keratin protein. The hair is approximately 90% protein and is made up of long chains of amino acids, which in turn are actually made up of elements. The major elements in human hair and mature na uh, normal hair is carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. In no normal healthy hair, the percentages follow as 51% carbon, 21% oxygen, 6% hydrogen, 17% nitrogen, and 5% sulfur. That was a lot of information to get into such a short topic, but it's really actually very important to how you treat your hair, knowing how, what it's made up of. All right, let's talk about the growth of hair. This is probably the most misunderstood piece of information about hair. It starts with the antigen phase, and this is the growth phase. This is where the hair is produced. On average, healthy growth is about half an inch per month. Some experience more than that, but that's what the average would be. About 90% of the scalp hair is in the growing phase at any one time, and it generally lasts three to five years, but some cases can even last as long as 10 years. And that's kind of why some women can only grow their hair to their shoulders and others can grow all the way down to the floor. It just depends on how long your antigen phase actually is. The second phase is the catagen phase. It's a brief transition period, and it's considered the resting phase. During this phase, the follicle den tends to shrink and detach from the dermal papilla, and it, the hair bulb starts to disappear. And less than 1% of hair is actually in the catagen phase at any one time. It's very short, and it generally lasts one to two weeks. The final phase is the telogen phase, when fully grown hair sheds during this phase. And it either sheds during the telogen phase or it remains in place and it gets pushed out by the antigen phase, which repeats after. About 10% of scalp hair is in the telogen phase at any one time. It approximately lasts for about three to six months. As far as hair loss is concerned, we used to think that we lost about 100 to 150 hairs per day, but Recently, they've discovered that the average rate of hair loss is closer to 35 to 40 hairs per day. As soon as the phase, the telogen phase ends, the hair returns to the antigen phase and begins the cycle all over again. On average, the entire growth cycle repeats itself once every four to five years. I know that was a lot of information. I hope you found it very helpful and learned something from it. But if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.